welcome back. Uh, he told me that was good music. Can you believe it? He, he's selecting the music today, the young man, and uh, he's doing very well. Thank you very much indeed, Aaron. Delighted to welcome onto the program Caroline Hanlon of uh, uh, Much Grange. That's right. Uh, Green Ore. Yes, indeed. And you'll know the name Hanlon. It's Hanlon Transport, of course, over the years. The iconic Hanlon brand. We see it everywhere. Well done. Uh, I had, this is the story, I, I had the great privilege of knowing John Hanlon, and John w went to his reward much, much too quickly, but he left good behind him. Uh, John assisted me build two schools in Africa, and he did that with generosity beyond, beyond compare. And he also had a dream, and that dream has now come to fruition. And Caroline, maybe you would remind us of John's dream. Yeah. Um, it was Dad's dream that um, a children's respite centre um, be built uh, or be in use, really, for any children um, of the area that needed um, a little bit of help and also for the parents that they had um, a little bit of help just uh, for a few days at a time, mm. two, three days, um, because uh, taken away from their 24-hour care yeah. of their um, child that had severely disabled. So um, it was really what happened was um, a local family, uh, a neighbour of ourselves, ha have a child um, with a disability. And it was when Daddy was in um, considerable contact with this family, he realised... He went to Lourdes with them. Uh, yeah, he, he actually went to Brazil with to them. To Brazil with yes, them? Yes, to Brazil, yeah. yeah. Uh, and when he was with them for the week, he seen the um, the efforts and um, that they had to uh, care for their little yeah. girl, which was no problem to them. They do it on a daily basis and absolutely uh, love it. Like, but it really can take its toll on the parents themselves, twenty four seven care um, every day of the week. So it was from that then he looked in to see what uh, facilities was out there for. Um, parents uh, in situations like this and there really wasn't very much so he said about um, trying to uh, set up a respite center for uh, that the kids could come stay mm. for two three days at a time give the parents that uh, small short break but which would meant so much to them um, that they could actually get a full night's sleep for yeah, a change of instead of being up and down a, a, every other yeah. hour and this center it, it was something that didn't exist he had to grow the concept in his brain. Uh, from his mind, he reckoned, this is what it might look like. This is what we could do. We could put a playground in there. We can put a kind of sensory area in there. And here are the bedrooms and the bathrooms. Yeah. It all came from John. It did, yeah. It was all his brainchild now, to be very honest. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't meant for him to see it flourish. Um, it, ha uh, it didn't happen but until back earlier this year that we actually physically got it opened. So, but the, it was definitely his brainchild and his dream before he passed on. And it's, it's at Lordship, halfway between Carlingford and Dundalk, yes. roughly halfway yeah, there. And the children who are coming, they're children who are challenged with very, very serious health issues. Yes, yeah, they are. They're, they're very special kids. Um, they bring a smile to your face every time you see them. Um, they just, just slightly uh, special in that way that they just need that little bit of extra care. So um, it's brilliant for them. It's a really homely environment. Um, it's not like their hospital environment, what they're maybe used to throughout their childhood. Mm. Um, it's really homely and it's really home from home was kind of the, the idea behind it. What kind of man was your daddy? <laughs> uh, Hard to put into words, I suppose. He had a vision that not many had or have. Um, when he put his mind to something, he definitely got it done. And uh, just really caring for everybody else. Yeah. He was a caring man, hugely yeah. caring man. Yeah, very much so. You know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm, he, I, I first met him when you set up the world record for the tractors ploughing in the one place. Mm, that's right. And yeah. it went into the Guinness Book of Records. And I remember writing about it at the time. It was a scene of biblical proportions. <laughs> the tractors were as far. And that's when I first met John, and we did the interviews and whatever. And then I got to know him a little bit, and he got to know a little bit about the SMA schools in Africa. That's correct. Yeah. And not only was he planning to do things in Lordship, 
Mm. He was doing things across the River Niger, yeah. and he did so with great accuracy and great wonderment. He did, yeah. No, but definitely, he was always about everybody else, um, always about them first, and anything he could do to help, he'd do it. That was my experience. And I remember one of the last times I met your dad, Michael Ryan had come down to do the, uh, mm. the nationwide program yeah. at your Museum of Tractor Memorabilia yeah, there right. at, uh, at your home. And on that occasion, I remember your mummy saying, John, he was very ill at the time, but he got out of bed to be part of that event. He did. And he was on that program. He was, yeah. And there he was. And yeah. uh, he, he, his legacy is unbelievable. You know, the schools in Africa, the respite center for the children. He, he must be very close to God, you know, <laughs> to be able to do all these things, because he never, he never cared to do it for himself. He always worked for others, wouldn't you say? Well, that was it. He was a very humble man. He wouldn't yeah. want to take any praise for anything. But um, at the same time, you know, it's great to have a, such a legacy. Absolutely. You know. I remember it was particularly wonderful when you opened the, the centre, before the children came there. Yes. But it was the official opening of it about a year ago, was it? Uh, it was February. February this of this year. year. Yes, nearly We were there. Year. And the, the new Archbishop of Armagh designate was there, well, the, uh, Mr. Martin, Father, yeah. uh, Bishop Martin. Yes. Yeah, uh, and he'd said the Mass. Mm -hmm. And then all of the sort of the big people and the bishop, led by the bishop, were all going over to go through the doors. But guess who the big people were led by? The wheelchairs and the special children. Yes. Leading them across. Mm -hmm. and it was the most lovely moment that all the big people fell back and the people who mattered the children were leading them forward into yeah. the new facility. Well, that's, that's it. The children are key in this facility. It's them that are, are totally important, and that's what we always are striving to, just to make sure that they're comfortable and that they're happy and want to come back. Now, you have been there and you've seen the effect it's having on the children yeah. when they come in. Paint us a picture of that kind of moment. Yeah, it's 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 really good um, when you hear the parents tell you the stories. You know, there's some kids that can't really communicate very well with them at all. Um, but uh, there was one child in particular that um, can't speak or can't really communicate with his parents. But um, he he made a drawing um, that which represented the respite, and that's why the, the mother knew that he wanted to go back. He came, visited, just to see what it was like, like an open day kind of thing. And then he kept doing the drawing again and again. And uh, that's how the mother knew, oh my God, oh. there's something about this. So he, wants, he wants to be He there. wants to be back, yeah. You've seen all of these children. They're, they are, they're special in many ways. They're special because of their health needs. They're special in the way they can inspire those of us who don't have similar health needs. But they're also inspirational in their attitude to life, or am I misreading it? No, totally. They, they just take on life um, so much better maybe than we do. We worry and stress over things, but they're just, they just love life. And, um, you know, their, their smiles and their face, they're really just um, infectious, I suppose, would be a good word for it. You know, you just can't not smile back at them. Absolutely. So they really and the, do. the power of a smile. Yeah changes worlds. Exactly. You yeah. know, I, I think that's so, so very true. You're still trying to, you're still fu fundraising for the for Yeah, the, we the, will the, continue the to fundraise. Um, the inside of the building and everything is now complete on that. But outside now, um, we're hoping early next year to set about doing some uh, upkeep of the outside. Um, maybe uh, get a sensory garden uh, in place for the summertime that they'll be able to go out and enjoy. Mm. There is sensory equipment inside, so now we'd like to sort of bring that outside then as well. So. Yeah. Well, how do people communicate with you in order to give you some support? Yeah, well, we have a Facebook page. Um, it's called the Maria Goretti Foundation. Maria Goretti. And that's the... Why Maria Goretti? Um, Maria Goretti was a saint that was um, very close to our family. Um, and we wanted to have a name on the building that um, was close to us and meant something to us because um, Daddy wouldn't want his, his name, anything, just no. in lights or anything like that. So this was a sort of silent way of how we knew that it meant um, it had a connection with our family. So. 
And it also, you know, if, if I recall correctly, the actual site was, was, was given by a neighbour, yes. a lady next yeah. door almost, yes, who had exactly. known your daddy during, during his life. Yeah, yeah, very generous people. It's amazing the generosity that's out there in this world. It's absolutely brilliant. She d uh, donated the site and that's how it all came about because it, it to and fro where it was going to go and where it was going to be yeah. built or yeah. maybe a house was going to be um, sort of built, um, sort of renovated as oh, such, yeah. mm. uh, went down that road for a while, but then it all just sort of fell into place then, mm. and thankfully it's now up and running, which is the most so important thing. the Maria Goretti Foundation, yes, uh, but is the, the, the w Facebook is Maria Goretti uh, Foundation. That's what we call it. Yeah. So I've got that right. The Maria Goretti Foundation. So if you want to help this absolutely wonderful project, Simply go on Facebook and find the Maria Goretti Foundation and take it from there. Yeah, well, all the contact details are on that and Good. they can give us a call or anything like that. It would be much appreciated. Caroline Hanlon, thank you very much indeed. And my, my best wishes and my love to all your wonderful family. No problem, Thanks a million for having me. Take care. All right, then.